Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm Renault Street, and today we are installing PCBSD on my laptop. So, as you guys know, I am a Linux user. I use Linux as my day-to-day -day operating system. Um, whether I was doing Nerd in the Street or not, I would be using Linux. Now, on this channel, I have played around with BSD like twice, uh, just a couple of times, and it hasn't gone very well either time. But recently I've been feeling a little hypocritical because a lot of the arguments that I use about why I don't use BSD are the same arguments that people use about why they don't use Linux. And I talked about that quite a bit in the Nerd on the Street 3 year live stream. You can go and watch the highlights video from that if you want to hear me expand on that a little bit. But yeah, long story short, I've decided to give BSD another try. You know, I, yeah, like I said, a lot of people don't even give Linux a shot. And I have really not given BSD a shot at all. So, this is my laptop. Like I said, um... This isn't the same as installing BSD on a Dell Dimension like I've done in the past because I don't use the Dell Dimensions for anything. They're sitting around here. They're not doing anything. I actually do use this laptop for quite a few things. Um, they're simple things. I use the laptop for browsing the web, obviously. Simple document editing. I use it for writing. And I also use it for editing podcasts. So we're going to see if we can get those three things working. If I can get a web browser on there working, if we can get LibreOffice on there or some sort of Office suite with the own cloud client preferably. And also, if we're really lucky, if we can get Caden Live on there, because uh, that's what I used to edit the podcasts. So yeah, we're going to see how PCBSD works. I have connected the laptop to my computer with an HDMI cable, and we're going to be capturing the screen. Don't worry, none of that shifty camera pointed at the screen stuff today. But yeah, here is PCBSD 10 point, I think it's 10.1, Joule. Okay, so we are now recording the HDMI feed. No signal as you can see, out of range. Let's see, um, oh, right. Let me turn the laptop back off because uh, I forgot to put the USB drive in. We are installing um, PCBSD from a USB stick today. I downloaded the ISO image and I used DD on Linux to write it to the USB drive. So here's hoping that works. Um, booting to grub. All right. Graphical install. All right, we're going to do graphical install of uh, PCBSD. We're going to see if we can't get the display working a little bit better because clearly the display is not working great right now and I'm not seeing anything on my laptop screen but I am seeing what you're seeing right now on the um, capture card screen and okay so now I've got alright I've got I've got a feed on the laptop screen okay here we go alright 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 video resolution 1024 by 768. Can we change that? Okay, there. So this is a mirror of my laptop screen right now. Um, yeah, it's 1024 by 768. Sorry that I can't get you better quality than that. But yeah, this is a mirror of what I'm seeing. Um, although a very fuzzy mirror. Still a mirror. Well, here we are. This is the FreeBSD. We have booted into the install disk successfully. Uh, where did my mouse go? There it is. So we'll click Next. So here you can select uh, PCBSD. Obviously, is made to be used on the desktop. Uh, there's also a server version of this called TrueOS, which I might look forward to in the future. And then um, Life Preserver Backup. Not sure what that is. But we're going to customize this installation because I actually don't want KDE 4 on this. I've used KDE 4. I've moved on to Plasma 5. It's my current desktop environment. But I actually want to try. As you can see, there's a huge range of um, desktop environments available for BSD, including all the usuals. GNOME, KDE, uh, LXDE, XFCE. Down at the bottom there, I actually want to try one called Lumina. And Lumina is made specifically um, for PCBSD and FreeBSD, made specifically for them. So we're going to go ahead, I want to try Lumina. Um, so that's our desktop environment. 
Uh, and now we can also go through other things. We don't need any uh, video drivers. Looks like there's only two two drivers available, and they're both NVIDIA. Editors. Yeah, we want LibreOffice, like I said. That's one of the things that we need. And then the other, the other major thing that we need is a web browser. Oh, darn. I was hoping they would have Opera, but they don't. It makes sense because Opera is closed source, but we, you have your choice between Firefox and Chromium. I'll select Firefox for now, um, but yeah, I'm gonna really gonna try and get Opera on here in the future. I support free software, but I, I, I talked about that in the live stream too, why I'm using Opera, so yeah, hopefully we can get that on here. Um, I shouldn't need an email client or anything. You can install Java if you want to. Um, I'm not going to... Actually, you know what? It would probably be a good idea to install Java because I may be using this laptop for Displaced, uh, which requires Minecraft. And, okay, that should be everything. Oh, you can install VirtualBox guest packages and everything there. All right. Uh, system utilities, security... Um... All right, I'm just looking through everything that you can do here. You can uh, install. They've got. I think there's there's more. Well, I know there's more packages available than just these that we're seeing right now. Um, but yeah, this is what they give you to select from for install. So the following meta packages will be installed: Lumina, LibreOffice, OpenJDK 8, which is Java 8, and Firefox. All right, next. Um, disk selection. There is no. Um, disk partitioner in this installer I've been that that's what the the manual online said um, so basic it looks like this is a partition manager use entire disk yep yep uh, apparently we'll be using ZFS for the first time for my first time I have always used ext2 or ext4 so first time using ZFS all right Okay, next. Start the customized disk installation now. Yes, all right. So we are now partitioning the laptop's internal hard drive and uh, creating a ZFS file system. Yeah, sorry that this is a bit blurry, but like I said, um, this is what <laughs> this is what the laptop's putting out. So uh, yeah, at least we've got video of the screen. This is still better than if the camera was pointed at the screen, is it not? So now we're installing, I guess we're installing packages, so it's extracting the system packages from the USB stick, I guess. I don't know if they're called packages. Are they called packages? I don't want to look anything up right now, but I don't want to mess up the recording or anything, but yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, they're still called packages. Although FreeBS, I know BSD, you, you compile more stuff traditionally, but I think they, they've got package managers now. All right, so meta package, PCBSD base. Yeah, um, the fact that BSD now has packages is really helpful because if I had to compile everything, um, last time I installed FreeBSD, I used ports, and I had to, you know, ports, you compile whatever you install, and it took forever because it was a really slow computer I was installing on. So right now what I'm seeing is the USB stick is being read from and the hard drive light is on so it's being written to. I know we're not seeing much on the screen but yeah, must be copying files over. So while we're waiting I might as well explain why I'm using PCBSD rather than FreeBSD. Um, basically the last time I tried to use BSD I tried using FreeBSD and I didn't have a very good time with it, but I realized that's kind of unfair uh, because, well, you know, FreeBSD is notorious for being difficult to set up, and I kind of faulted BSD on that, but Arch Linux is also pretty difficult to set up, especially for newcomers to Arch and newcomers to Linux in general. You know, if somebody has used Windows all their life, they're never going to be able to install Arch Linux. Um, on their own. So yeah, I figured you don't start out a brand new Linux user with Arch. You start out a brand new Linux user with Ubuntu. And uh, PCBSD is sort of the Ubuntu of BSD. It's the distribution of BSD that is 
most widely used by new, you know, strictly desktop users. It's the largest distribution, um, you know, other than actual FreeBSD, but it's the largest easy to install distribution. And hopefully while I'm using this, I'll learn enough about BSD that I'll be able to sometime in the future use FreeBSD. Just like I started out on Ubuntu and other easy to use distributions when I started using Linux, and now I know how to use Arch. All right, so that took a few minutes, but I guess it's not so bad compared to the hours that I spent on FreeBSD. But yeah, now we are installing Lumina, the desktop environment. And there we go, that was pretty quick. LibreOffice is next. Okay, your system is now installed. Yeah, that was, uh, it was a lot, uh, well, I won't say a lot slower than Ubuntu. I don't know. I guess it was comparable speed to a Linux distro. So click finish to reboot. And now I'm seeing, yeah, more scrolling text that you guys might not be able to see. So now I will remove the um, USB drive from the laptop. I don't know why we're still in a square here. I guess BSD thinks that we're supposed to have a square screen. Now at least we're seeing the um, scrolling stuff on the recorded screen and not just on my laptop's physical screen. Physical screen is blank currently. So this is sort of a slow boot. I'm not sure if it's slower than usual because it's the first boot or if it's always going to be this slow. Hopefully this supports my laptop's wireless card. Because um, if it doesn't, then I will have to... Okay, so now we're starting X. If it didn't, now I'd have to plug in to Ethernet whenever I wanted to sync my files or anything. Which wouldn't be the end of the world. But, alright, confirm resolution. Keep these settings. No. Screen resolution. Um, alright, so here's the deal. The laptop screen is... 1366 by 768 but the capture card is just supposed to be straight 720p so let's try let's try uh, 1280 by 720 I don't see 1280 by 720 anywhere 1360 by 768 I know that the oh hey we're using an ATI I think we should be using an Intel graphics driver because we're on an Intel system. So let's try 1366 by 768 with the Intel driver. Um, okay, that's much better. That's much better. Keep these display settings. Okay, um, now you guys, now you're seeing a squished. Here, let me on. Let me let me fix this. Nope, nope, that didn't do it. Okay, there we go. 1360 by 768. Um, Alright, so this is a couple pixels off from my actual screen, but managed to trick the capture card into working. Okay, so now you can see what's on the screen, and now it's a little bit less blurry. Um, so yeah, it says, you know, I'm using English. Welcome to your new PCBSD system. You may change your language above and click Next to begin the setup process. I'm kind of, well, nah, I... I Kind of curious if that text would change if I like change this. No, it doesn't change that starting text. All right, go back to English. Next, um, time zone, of course. America slash should be under C, right? I guess not. I do not have scrolling in the trackpad right now. That's scrolling's not working. Um, okay, sweet. Can we not get my time zone, or did I... I probably missed it. These say central time, but I've never used North Dakota as my time zone before. I always use Chicago. Okay, yeah, we could go up. We could go up. Chicago, central time. I don't know why I... It wasn't letting me... Yeah, see, it's not... All right. This menu is difficult to work with. Sorry about that. Um, enter valid host name, BSD, laptop. We'll make it a uh, PCBSD laptop. Next, root password. Next, create a user. 
uh, Jacob Kaufman. Wait, uh, all right, so it automatically made the username Jay Kaufman. Um, Linux usually automatically makes your username just your first name in all lowercase, but this gave first initial last name. So we'll keep what it gave us by default. Um, password. See if we can use the same password for our user account as we can with our root account. Yep. All right, configure audio output. Um, so, all right, yeah. So that works. Uh, the first time I clicked that, it took a second to, I guess, initialize the sound driver. But yeah. And then if I switch this to the, um, there, now you can hear it through the HDMI. Okay, I may need to mute that now. Oh, hey, I'm recording over both of the... Oh. All right, well, this video is going to be a bit of a mess because um, I didn't realize I was recording my microphone in both Audacity and in OBS. But you know what? That's all right. Yeah, we'll just mute the, the laptop video. Everything will be fine, everyone. So, yeah. Um, okay. Next. All right. Oh, good. We do have wireless. That's really cool. Didn't even have to set up a driver or anything, which is good because I would not have been able to find one. Um, number lock there. Let's see if we can go ahead. So when whenever we changed the X settings, it had to restart X. Now we've changed our network settings and it says restarting network. So I guess you have to restart things in BSD whenever you uh, change configuration options. I know that probably sounds stupid. I'm just trying to, you know, gather gather some basic intel on what's going on. Uh, but yeah, really, really cool. I actually was not sure if we would be able to get wireless with, uh, with BSD here. But looks like we will be able to. And so if you wish to skip, click next below. Next has turned into finish. So I guess we have successfully connected to our network. OK. So uh, log in to PCBSD laptop. That's our host name. Drop down box where you can put your username. Uh, Fluxbox is installed with all PCBSD installations. No matter what, if you install GNOME, KDE, uh, they go ahead and include Fluxbox, I guess, as a fallback or something. Um, but yeah. We installed Lumina, because, uh, you know, I want the full PCBSD experience. And, right, almost forgot the password I made two seconds ago, even though it's insanely simple. So, go ahead and log in. Uh, X screensaver warning, this version is very old. I clicked on the settings button there for X screensaver. Um, okay, so now we've got settings for X screensaver. Do we have, like, yeah, let's, let's pick out a screensaver. I haven't had a screensaver in a while. Oh, hey, there, all right, so Lumina is still loading. Um, I guess this is, I don't know what's going on. All right, we'll go with that screensaver because that one looks nice. Uh, is there like a? Oh no. Um, all right, we're just gonna X out of that, that X screensaver thing. And has Lumina finally loaded, or are we still waiting on things? I think we're still waiting on things to load. Yep, things are still loading up. Bit slow, um, but yeah, PCBSD is not a lightweight operating system. Not as lightweight as like GhostBSD, but it should be pretty lightweight nice uh, first maybe it's first boot or maybe it's just boot boot up sound there uh, no wireless network we just connected to the wireless network all right um, getting started if your computer is connected via network cable it will auto configure wireless users may search for and connect to networks with the uh, wireless tray icon so where's the wireless tray icon I don't see it. 
I, I, it, this looks like the system tray over here, but. <clears throat> Alright, we've got a couple virtual desktops. Um, system volume. Volume keys are not working. So that sucks, I guess. Yeah, everything's a bit sluggish. I, um, not sure if it's BSD or if it's just Lumina. Not sure also, yeah, where, where that wireless thing is. We're going to check don't show this on next startup because it's not giving me much useful information. Install applications. Yeah, we're definitely going to use the app cafe. PC BSD control panel. Um, yeah, life preserver is the backup application that comes with this. Uh, oh, and it integrates with FreeNAS. That's cool. Um, it'd be really great if I could figure out how to get that wireless icon. But stay up to date. Um, when the icon... Alright, yeah, see the updater tool. Nothing is in the, the taskbar. None of these things it's talking about are there. Applications. I don't see Firefox here either, and I asked it to install Firefox. Oh, here, here we go. There we go. Um, so we've got VNC server, terminal, screensaver. Um, can we just click that to launch the screensaver? No. <laughs> if this is the latest version of X screensaver that your distro ships, then your distro is doing you a disservice. Whoever makes PCBSD might want to remove that message. Um, yeah, Lumina. Okay, I guess, yeah, Lumina is still sort of not released yet, but... Let's open up Firefox and see if we do have internet, or what's going on. Fox is not currently set as your default browser. Um, it's the only browser we have installed, so I kind of was hoping it was the default browser. Um, so let's see. Can we get to my router's config page? Nope. Let's go to the BSD control panel. All right, so there's the update manager. And um, let's see. Networking. Yeah, this is really sluggish. Um, Broadcom. All right, so I'm guessing that this is the Ethernet card and this is the um, the wireless card. So let's click configure on the wireless card. Knet is configured. So how come we don't have an IP address? You guys watched me. All I've done is use the tools that told me to. So, yeah, we don't have an IP address yet. Let me go ahead and check what kind of um, what kind of security we're using, just in case that's it. I'm signing into my router's admin page on the computer I'm recording this video on. Wireless security. We are using WPA. Yeah, we're using WPA. Personal. Um, Alright, let's see if restarting the network helps. Not sure how we got to that. Yeah, let's see what else we've got here. Um, let's see if we can get our display mirroring. Let's see, do we double click? Alright, so we can't even change display settings unless we reboot the computer. What's up with that? Linux can change display settings without rebooting the computer. I'm just saying. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Okay, well, um, I just typed that wrong. But we've got Yahoo Search now. So... Yep. Alright, we have internet. So if we maximize this window, we can go to like distrowatch.com for instance and then we can switch between windows using these buttons at the top of the screen you know um sometimes it just seems like freebsd uh not freebsd i'm sorry um sometimes it just seems like pcbsd uh it's just kind of a little flashy for um for good use but because yeah everything's a, everything's a little sluggish um and i feel like it would be less sluggish if there were less like shiny things less desktop effects if everything were 
flatter. It would both make it look better and uh, make it less sluggish. But let's see. How do I get back to the settings again? I need. I. I. I'd, I'd like to. Uh, all right. Here it is. Control panel. Okay. Let's see if we can't get scrolling working on the trackpad. We got keyboard settings. Um. Let's see, uh, are there any updates available? I don't want to... Alright. Oh, install package updates. Yes, I'd like to view them. Okay. Repository missing. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and... I think if we click start updates, then it'll run package update. Okay. Hello. Hello. We're going to roll that window up. So I'm not sure what's going on. But um, do we have to run that ourselves? Let's open up Xterm. All right. PKG update. All right. Let's try it now. PKG update. Okay. So now if we open up the updater, maybe, that still says that. Okay, so that's weird. Um, let's try out App Cafe. Let's close Firefox, just to be fair here for performance, um, and open up App Cafe. See if App Cafe is as fat as some of the Linux package managers out there. Um, enter your user password. Okay. Updates available. Hey, yeah. Okay, I'll, I, I, you know. Um. Oh, we've got a status bar. Oh. Okay, you can drag things to one side of the screen to uh, change your virtual desktop. Alright, updated packages on local system. So now maybe? Uh, I don't know if we're supposed to have two package managers open at once, but... Yeah, there's no... Alright, so the tab's gone to install updates. I guess whatever that was doing, finished. So now we can see... Um, Firefox is installed, Lumina is installed. All right, we might we might grab Mate. Uh, that's really nice to see that Mate's on here. We might we might grab Mate because um, yeah, that's a bit more lightweight I feel like than Lumina. Even on Mate, we're gonna have some BSD quirks, and I'll have to uh, deal with them. But that's fine. Let's uh, let's do App Search. See if Opera. Ah, uh, Opera Twelve. I want Opera 30. Hey PCBSD, your Opera version is 18 versions behind. Just so you know. Yeah, I feel like that's not going to be very good for for browsing the web or anything. I don't know what that checkbox does, but we'll check it and search again. Um, nope, still nothing. We've got, yeah, Linux Opera. And yeah, don't know what the version, the difference between Opera and Linux Opera is. I think just for fun, uh, we are going to go ahead and install Mate because Mate is a finished desktop environment, unlike Lumina. Um, and we're I'm going to keep Lumina on here, and I'm going to try and use it, but let's see if uh, things go any smoother after we install Mate because yeah, everything's still a little quirky here. Let's see, we have configuration options for App Cafe. Oh, you can remote in. That's cool. Um, hmm. So I keep seeing something being refreshed or something like that. There's not really a status bar for installing Mate. At least Chromium is available. That's nice that Chromium is available. Um, although I really, I'd, I'd prefer to use Opera. Just because Opera is what I'm using on everything else. I understand it's proprietary and everything, like I said, but... All right, so that's done. Installed X11 Mate. Um, let's go ahead and log out.
I wonder if we should do a complete reboot or what. Um, and how do we log out? All right, log out. I guess we'll try doing it. Oh, no, yeah, let's do a restart. All right, let's see if Mate works any better because we don't want to judge this on Lumina if Lumina's not done yet. I didn't think about that. But yeah, this laptop cannot handle... I think the laptop could do KDE. It can't handle Gnome 3. We could put KDE 4 on it, but it would still be pretty pretty heavy for the hardware. So we're seeing scrolling text again, although once again we cannot see what it's actually saying. Alright, there we go. Oh, I just saw a mouse cursor for a moment. There we are. Alright. So... Well, took a second for the keyboard to activate, and yeah, let's try locking into Mate now. And let's see if that's any more responsive, or if it fixes any of our problems. Still kind of slow for Mate, but alright. Oh yeah, that's, that's way better. Yeah. Yeah, the icons always do that thing where they take a moment to load up. So let's go ahead and load all the icons. But yeah, um, now that we're back, now that we're in Mate, yeah, now you can see we've got a wireless, we've got a menu up here that you can right click on. Um, yeah, we've got the update manager. All right, so Lumina is still a work in progress. Mate, as you can see if we do about Mate, Mate is at 1.8. Um, uh, you know, GNOME, GNOME was made for years and then Mate was a fork of that, so Mate's plenty stable. So yeah, let's open up Firefox now. And Firefox is, you know, the, the, the whole system's still a little slow. But yeah, definitely everything's much more responsive now that we're in Mate. Um, and Mate's a whole lot less flashy too. So yeah, this is good. So I won't go into too much more. Um, I don't want to have you guys sitting here all day. But yeah, that was installing PCBSD and installing, um, you know, a couple of basic things. Yeah, PCBSD version 10, uh, Joule. Let me know what you guys want to see me do on this. If there's anything you want to know, if you can do under BSD, if there's any programs you want to know, if uh, you can get them on BSD. I'm going to see about maybe compiling. I don't know. I guess you can't. I don't know. I'm not sure if I can get Opera or not on this because they make it for Linux. But I don't think they make it for BSD outright. But yeah, um, if there's any other programs, or like I said, um, I'm just going to be playing around with this, using it whenever my main computer is tied up with rendering or uh, uploading or anything like that. So yeah, that was installing PCBSD version 10. I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm there in the street, and I will see you guys later. Bye.